So the first style of factoring is called GCF. Do you remember what it stands for? Greatest common factor. Greatest common factor. So that means that in all of the terms, I would have something that's common. So for this first one, there's an x squared, there's an 8x. So this term and this term are both divisible by what? By x. Then I'm going to do a bracket. So there's two terms. So I'm going to need two things inside the brackets yet. So x times what would produce x squared? x. x times what would produce subtract 8x? There it is. You can always multiply it because it will get back to here. Factoring and multiplying are the opposite operations. <clears throat> okay, there's three terms here. So what's the most I can divide all three of them by? So let's just do the number part and then we'll do the letters. What's the most number I can divide them all by? Five. Five. Um, let's talk about x's. What's the most x I can take out? X. Just an x. Is there an amount of y's I can take out? No. No. Here's the reason why. There's no y's to take out of that one. So it has to be something you can do with all three and you can't. So I'm done. Now there's three terms. So I'm going to have three pieces inside the brackets. So 5x times what to make that? Y cubed. y cubed. 5x times something here would make that. And finish it off. 5x times the last thing. So you can do that on your own. Next style is called a difference of squares. So it's called a difference, which means a subtraction and squares. Okay, so this process involves us doing two brackets. And you have to think first times the first position will make you an m squared. So m times an m. How do two things multiply to be negative? Positive and a negative. Positive and a negative. Multiply to get you a negative. And how do you get a 64? And it has to be a square. 8 and 8. Okay. Now, here's another thing to think about why it's working this way. If I FOIL this, what happens to the O and the I part of the FOIL? What is O? How much do you have on the O? Negative 8M. How much do you have on the I? Positive 8M. What happens to negative 8M and positive 8M? They'd just be gone. And so that's why on when we say a trinomial, a trinomial always works like this when it's a when it's our simple trinomial. This is the f, this is the oi, and this is the l. For difference of squares, specifically that o and the i are gone. So that's why you don't have a trinomial. You only have those two pieces on difference of squares, okay? So difference of squares. So set me up two brackets. How are you going to make the 4x to the 6? Did you pick 
x to the 3. Does that make sense? That will make me a 4, and that will make me an x to the 6. Plus, minus, that's how you make the, the subtract on the next term. And then this would be the number 10 to make the 100. And you would need a y to the 7 to make up to the 14. Okay? So simple trinomial is the next one. So this is the F. This would be the O and the I, and this is the L. Okay, it's the components. What do we need with our numbers? We need to have a number, two numbers that do what and what. Do you remember the rules? Add to something and multiply to something. Where, which order is it going to go in? We need numbers to multiply to that, and we need numbers to add to that. Because you're doing the O and the I. You're putting them together with an add. Okay, so here we go. Obviously, we need to multiply to that, but this one is the normal M and M, right? So there's our multiply to that, m times m. So here and here, we need two numbers that multiply to 27. And we can get a 6 with the add. So 9 and 3 is probably what came to your mind as multiples of 27. So it has to be a subtract 6. So you're going to need... Make sure you go with your signs, right? Because you need to have a negative 27. So that's one of them is negative. Okay, so the next one starts with an x times an x. What did, what, are you asking me something on the last one? Okay, so here is the O. How much do you have on the O? You have 3m. How much do you have on the i? 3m, and here you have a subtract 9m. What does that make together? Negative 6m. Do you see it, the component? When you put the o and the i together, that's the add up to that. Yep, good. So what times what can make 12? So 6 times 2 might be on your mind. And because I'm going to get an 8 out of it. Now, <clears throat> what do we know about the signs? To multiply to positive, they have to be the same sign. So you either have both positives or both negatives. But how do you then make a negative 8? And then our last type is the complex trinomial. Okay, so this one is a whole ordeal now. So we're going to start with this. What is the flood number? 30. Pos I'm going to go positive 30. I'm going to write that specifically in there. Okay, I'm going to list some possible ways to get 30. 1 times 30, 2 times 15, 3, yep, 3 times 10, 30, is it divisible by 4? No. no, is it divisible by 5? Yes. Do any of these get you 11 if you add? 5 and 6. I would need them to be negative, negative. Reminding myself it needs to multiply to positive 30 and add to negative 11. Okay, now we're going to make the F list. 
How can you get 3x squared? There's not many options, just 1x times 3x. The L list, how could we have made the L? We could have done a 1 times a 10 or a 2 times a 5. So we're trying to now use combos from the F and L to make 6 and 5. That's the goal. So I need to do some partnership. This is the puzzle part. Can you partner something with something to make a 5 and a 6? Do you see something that will produce me a 5 and 6? multiplying. Okay, so if I put the x, 1x with a 5, that's going to make me a 5x, and if I put a 3x with a 2, that will make me a 6x. So now it's all about the setup. So I'm going to do first times first, so 1x times 3x. Remember, this is all about FOIL backwards. So I'm going to keep FOIL in my head. That is already, my F is done, right? I'm done with my F. Now, I'm going to think about my O and my I. These are the connection pieces. What did we piece together? So this is a 1x, and I told myself I wanted to partner it with a 5. Subtract 5x. <clears throat> so there's my outsides. Subtract 5x. And then here we partnered the 3x on the inside with a 2. And I want to subtract 6x. Do you see how I'm getting the negative 11x now? Yeah. O and I make a negative 5x and a negative 6x. There's my negative 11x. How do we know what sign is like in Well, we had marked over here that we needed a negative 5x and a negative 6x. Sorry, yeah, these are negatives. So we had already predetermined that. Okay, let's try another one. So FLU is negative 24. What do you already know about the signs? What do you already know about these signs? How do you make negative 24? Plus and a minus, right? There's going to be one thing that's a plus and one thing that's a minus. I already know that. 1, 24, 2, 12, 3, 8, 4, 6. So it helps, really helps to know your multiplication table stuff. I need to make a 10. Okay, I'm going to scratch these ones off because... The, I'm not looking at those, but this is a little tricky. Kind of looks like both of those could get me tens somehow. One of them is correct and one of them is wrong. What am I looking at as well? Plus and minus. So how do you make a negative 10 out of using something as a plus and something as a minus. You, you got to pick your right pair, so think about that. Okay, this one tricks people because they use the 4 and the 6, but to make the negative 10, they would both be negative, and now they're not making negative 24. They're making positive 24. So in the test, we, in the exam, do we have to list them all? No, you just, go you just go till you find yours, yep. Okay, we make the F list. M times 8M, 2M times 4M. Those are the options there. 
and 1 and 3 are the options there. I need a partner to make a 2 and a 12. You got to make some groups. What can make a 2 and a 12? 2 and a 12. One of them will be, yeah. We, have, we will get there when we put them into the brackets. So right now I'm just making just the numbers work. So we will get to the signs in here. So I'm going to put the 2M and the 4M in there with the first times the first. That's what I'm doing there. Don't be afraid to draw this for yourself. Give me your rainbow arcs, your outside, your inside. That's fine. So, what did we do here? We partnered 2M with 1. Okay, I'm going to do my sign here. This is 2M. So I want a plus, plus 2M. There's my 2M, my plus 2M. Good, seeing it? Here I partnered, looking up top here, I partnered the 4M with a 3, and I'm telling myself over here to be negative 12M. You should know if you are right or wrong. This always bothers me on tests because you can foil this out. Then you know if you're right. So what do you get when you foil it? Ready? What is the first times the first? 8m squared. What are the outsides doing? Plus 2m. What are the insides doing? Negative 12m. What's the last? Negative 3. 8m squared minus 10m minus 3. Did you get back to the question? Yeah. So you can check. Okay? So you should know if you're right because foiling and multiplying, foiling and factoring are the opposite. Okay, we are going to factor more than once. Okay, what is a style? I'm not going to tell you. So what is the style you want to factor here? Which style? Do you know your names? You have a GCF, a difference of squares, simple trinomial, or complex trinomial? GCF is the pick. You can GCF something out of those two. What's, what are you taking out? Six. Six. Now, I can factor more. There's another style I recognize, always recognizing my styles. Now I can do a difference of squares. So there's a six here. And then what's going to happen with this? It's going to turn into two brackets. And we have a what times a what, so x times an x. And then what times what? Plus 2 and a minus 2. I feel like this was definitely an area as a general on your test in this unit where everybody needed to work on. Okay, what style do you want to start out with here? What style do you want to start out with? 
A difference of squares is the first style to start out with. So two brackets. X squared and X squared gets me to the X fourth. Plus nine minus nine gets me the negative 81. Okay, now there's more, something else. Style-wise, what do you think? A difference of squares again. Okay, on this one. This is not a difference of squares. This is not factorable. Why isn't it factorable? It's because, uh, no, I'm not even gonna get into that, but it's not a difference of squares, okay? Do you see that it's not a difference of squares? No. What is the difference of squares called? What's the difference mean? Subtract. I can't, so it has a, a plus, so that's not a difference of squares. So I'm going to rewrite it, because I can't do anything. It's not factorable. And then the difference of squares over here can become xx plus minus and a 3. Okay? <clears throat> and this is the last one. I think I can leave the next section to Monday. Style. Recognizing styles. What's that? It is a complex trinomial, but that's not what I'm going to do to it. GCF. GCF should always be looked at first. If you can GCF, that's the most common one to start with. Okay? What can I take out of all of those terms? All three of them can be divided by a? Two. Getting an M squared, a minus 4M, and a minus what is it? 60. Okay. Now, not done. It's still factorable. Now it is a simple trinomial. A simple trinomial has a one something squared. So looking back to my first page here, look at this. This is a simple trinomial because it begins with a 1 something squared. 1 something squared. This is now a complex because it begins with a something x squared. Something x squared. Okay, does that make a difference? Okay, so now I'm going to leave my 2 and... So the two is out right now. The two is out of this. So what times what makes just the m squared? M. And we're doing what and what again? Multiplying to 60 and adding to the four part. So we have what times what to make 60? Six times 10. Six times 10. 6 times 10, one of them will be plus and one will be minus because it is a subtract. And it has to get you to a negative 4. 